Hello everyone, welcome back to the platformer lessons. In lesson number 11, we'll give the player the ability to shoot lasers and collect loot from defeated enemies. We'll need to create two new classes for this lesson. The first is going to be the laser. The second is going to be fruit. Both of these will need a sprite. In the asset store, I'm going to use the watermelon for my fruit. I'm just going to call it fruit, and it'll show up as fruit.png. Next, we need to look for the laser sprite. It's called red laser. I'm just going to name it laser. I'm going to show you a trick to save us some code in the future. Whenever we want to create a laser class, we're going to use the laser sprite. And we can set it inside the laser start. If we say self dot sprite equals sprite laser dot png, every time we create a laser object, it's going to run this code and set its own sprite. We can do the same thing inside the fruit. Inside the laser start, we're going to add two variables. They're going to look very familiar. We'll add a boolean to see if it's moving left or right. So I'll say moving right equals true. And I'll add a speed. So self.speed equals five. Inside the laser's loop, we're going to do those two if statements to control when it moves. And if we want to move it to the left, we need to do the opposite check. So now that the laser is pretty much set up, we'll let give the player the ability to shoot it. Inside the player loop, we're going to add another key is pressed function to see if the player shoots the laser. I'm going to add it after the jump code. So here I'm going to check if key was pressed and I'm going to use the F key Now, what do we want to happen when we press the F key? Well, we want to create a new laser object and then set its position to be wherever the player is so it can shoot outwards from the player. So we'll create a new laser and it's going to be a laser class And how do we tell the laser to be wherever the player is? Well, we just look at the player's position and match the laser's position to that. So wherever the player is on the x-axis, we're going to tell the laser to be at that position too. We're also going to set the y the same way.
You can test it out right now. As you can see, I'm able to create lasers, but there's two problems. For one, they're sideways. And for the other, I can't shoot left. I can only shoot right. In order to fix them being sideways, we can access a different part of an object, its angle. If I say new laser dot angle equals 90, I am turning it by 90 degrees. And that should make it horizontal instead of vertical, just like that. Shooting lasers to the left is going to be a little bit more code, but it's still pretty simple. What we need to do is keep track of which direction the player is facing. At the bottom of the player start, I'm going to add another variable. It's going to be called self.facingRight. And it's going to equal true at the beginning. Next, we want to change the facing right variable depending on which way the player is moving. So inside our code here, right after we change the scale of the player, we're going to say self.facingRight equals true, because if I press the D key, I'm, face I'm moving to the right. And if I press the A key, I'm moving to the left. So facing right equals false. Now that we're keeping track of which direction the player is facing, we can tell the laser to match. Since facing right is a boolean, and moving right is a boolean, we can compare them and change them directly. If I press the F key and I create a new laser, I can tell the new laser's moving right variable to equal my facing right variable. So if I'm facing right, the laser is going to move right. If I'm not facing right, the laser is not going to move right. And just like that, I can shoot lasers left and right. In order to test the laser, I'm going to move back to level 1 and modify the fly enemy. Inside the fly enemy loop, I'm going to add a collision check to see if the fly enemy collides with a laser. So if get collision between self and a laser. The code is going to be very similar to how the player takes damage. First, we'll check if the fly enemy is invincible by seeing if the inv timer, or the invincibility timer, is less than zero. If so, we'll reduce his health by one, and then set that invincibility timer to be 30. Finally, no matter whether the enemy is invincible or not, we're going to destroy the laser. In order to do that, we need to do another collision check to see which laser we're colliding with. So I'm going to say this laser equals get collision. And it's going to be the same collision as the one above. Next, we just destroy this laser. We can test this now and see that our laser connects with the enemy and if we hit him three times, we defeat the enemy. 
each enemy is going to need this collision check. Go ahead and copy it over when you get a chance. Finally, let's get that loot working. In most games, enemies don't always drop loot. Sometimes they don't drop anything at all. We can emulate that by using random numbers. In order to use random numbers, we need to import the random tools to the fly enemy loop. At the very top, add some extra space and type import random. There are certain tools we can access that aren't automatically added to every class, just to save some extra memory and space. If we want to use those, we have to import them. When the enemy is defeated, we're going to pick a random number. We'll create a variable named loot number, and it will equal random dot rand int, which is short for random integer. Random rand int is a function that'll pick a number between two other numbers, say zero and ten, or zero and a hundred. We tell it which numbers to use by typing it inside the brackets. Here I'm picking a number between 0 and 100. Every time an enemy is defeated, this function will pick a random number between those two numbers. It'll be different every time. Next, I want to see if that loot number is less than 50. If so, we'll create a fruit object. So if the loot number is less than 50, we're going to create a new object. It's going to be a fruit. So I'm going to call it fruit loot. And it's a new fruit, uh, fruit class. We want that fruit to be positioned right where the enemy was. So we're going to say fruit loot dot x equals self dot x. And the same thing for the y. You can test this and see if a fruit shows up. There it is. Now in order to collect the fruit, we need to do a collision check between the player and the fruit. In order to keep our player loop a little more clean, I'm going to do this code inside the fruit loop. First, we do a collision check to see if it's colliding with the player. If so, we need to get the information about the player. So we'll have to say this player equals get collision. It's going to be that same collision check again. If the player collides with the fruit, what we'll do is increase their health by one. So we can say this player dot health plus equals one. We also want to make it look like the player collected the fruit. The way to do this is just by destroying the fruit. No, that's not good. If I'm able to spawn a fruit from an enemy, I'm able to walk over and collect it. If you want to make sure it's working, you can actually do a print message and print this player dot health. That'll show in the console how much health they have. And just like that, I've reached four health. If you wanted to make sure the player didn't go past three health, you could do another if statement in here to check if the player's health is less than three. If so, that's when you'll add health.
That's it for this lesson. The next lesson will be a challenge lesson. I'll see you there.